everyone and hey. welcome back to another episode of Slightly Entertaining. Whoop, whoop. You'll probably see we've upgraded even further from last time because we've got wow. these lovely mic stands. So we're never going to drop these mics, mm. don't worry. Yep. Um, today, episode 28, come far. We're getting yeah. towards, I don't know, some big numbers here. 30 almost. Yeah, I have a special episode. We're going to be starting, I don't know if we're going to make this a series or not, but basically it's like show and tell. Everyone loves mm-hmm. a good show and tell. And today it's country edition. Mm. So we're going to be talking about... Well, well, we randomly, on a wheel, like, spun it to pick a country. Um, and then we're going to just share a bit of information about it. And hopefully you'll learn something from this. Yeah. But before we get to our information, the national today, of course. There was actually quite a lot for today. Mm. But um, I just picked a few that captured my mind. It's um, National Pet Obesity Awareness Day. Oh, is your pet obese, Keisha? Well, you know, sometimes <laughs> he, he goes on the little bit of a fatter <laughs> side. It's okay. He's well fed. He's well fed, exactly. Um, it's World Post Day, like P- Australia Post. No, World Post, but or as in like, like posting, but like posting mail. mail. Yeah. Have you? When was the last time you genuinely got something in the mail? Um, maybe. Uh, mm, no, I didn't even get any birthday cards. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say usually I get like birthday cards through the mail. Yeah, I that like I don't get any mail except for the no. occasional bank statement. Yeah. Maybe my um like. A high sc- something from school, a oh, yearbook yeah. or something came in the mail. My graduation certificate. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like that sort of thing. This was probably the last thing that came. It's quite sad. We should have a moment for all the postmen out there oh. who are out of a job. Exactly. Actually, no, I think they're doing fine because um, my online shopping addiction has definitely exactly. like they kept them in business. <laughs> anyway, um, it is also Curious Events Day. Ooh. I don't know what that might, you know, include. Curious events going so on. I don't know if there's something strange that you might see. Um, Yeah. It's National Bring Your Teddy Bear Day to s- Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Hang on, let me let me let me let me replace that. National Bring Your Teddy Bear to School Day. Oh. I remember in primary school we had one day where you could bring in like a teddy bear or like a dog or something like that. Real dog? Uh, no, like a teddy dog okay. or because okay, I say teddy bear, but I remember most people bringing some sort of dog, which is why I'm Soft confused toy, which maybe. it was. I don't know, but there were like prizes for like best dress there was blah 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 something 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 and i thought there'd be a prize for biggest toy so i brought my like have you seen <laughs> it my big toy dog yeah I i'll have, show you when it's like this big i brought it it was the hottest day at school <laughs> i'm holding it on my head there was no prize for the biggest did toy. they give you any sort of sympathy points no That's i don't so even funny. know i wasn't even recognized probably at that time the dog was bigger than you exactly yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was <laughs> anyways um it's also national moldy cheese day oh Love that. Just to <coughs> round it off. Remember the cheese touch from Diver Wimpy Kid? Oh, that was so funny. I used to be actually Oh, God, man. You almost got the cheese touch. <laughs> the what? The cheese touch. No one knows when or how. But uh, something, something. I don't know. <laughs> I love so that. So funny. I genuinely was like scared to get the cheese touch exactly. when I was younger. When I first Iconic. Anyway, so now we get on to the fun part. I'm actually yeah, so excited. I'm so for this. excited. We've I'm- both like enjoyed the whole process. Of researching oh, the country. Oh, 100%. Wait, give, it, give a teaser for what we can expect with your country. I'll give a little, like, oh, teaser okay. for mine. You can expect... Well, I don't know. What I'm wearing might give a hint. Well, it, give, well, it does, but, like, I don't know. You can guess mm-hmm. from it what I might be. You can expect vibrancy. You can expect a lot of, like, like a mixture and a lot of variation, hmm. but also a lot of, like, heritage and traditionalism. All right, with mine... Mainly my presentation, you can expect a lot of respect for the culture and educational content because today we are an educational podcast. Yes, we are. Today you are learning something. But also some <clears throat> authentic food from the place. Oh, yeah, me too, me too. And maybe a special guest. Oh, oh. Maybe, maybe. I have a you guest just gotta keep who watching. Be. You just got to keep watching. Exactly. Anyway, so with that, let's yeah. get into it. Do-do-do. Hola, señorita, y bienvenida a Guatemala. Cue like music. Da, 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 da. So yeah, the country I got picked with is Guatemala. So I'll start off by giving mm-hmm. a general introduction for those of you who might not know, or Carmen, I don't know if you know, who knows. Guatemala is located in Central America, just south of Mexico. Um, the capital is Guatemala City. Ooh, so, so original wow. for a name. Yep. But it is also the largest city in Central America. Wow. It's pretty cool. Their population is 17.6 million, which is also the most populous country in Central America. That's actually pretty big because exactly. Australia is only 27 million or something. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, a lot of people. Um, That is obviously the flag there, which is why I sort of am on theme. And for audio listeners, the flag is blue and white oh, with yeah. some um, 
light blue and white. Birds. So we've got light blue stripe, white stripe, light blue stripe, like vertical stripes with like a little emblem in the middle. Finally, the language is Spanish. That's Aye. their main language. I see. <laughs> yeah, hola. Um, Spanish, but there are also Muy 22 bien. other indigenous dialects oh, wow. in the country. So I'll give you a bit of history because I think one of the main things Guatemala is known for is like their ancient history. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a spiel. Whoosh. Okay, this is my horrible, not horrible, it's actually great history of um, Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Basically, we start off with the pre-Columbian era. This is like the ancient times of Guatemala. It was home to the ancient Mayan civilization, which you might have heard of. You might mm -hmm. have seen. Mm -hmm. I don't know specific things. Um, this was the first form of urbanization in Guatemala um, and other nearby Mesoamerican land. The Mayans, unlike the Aztecs of Mexico and the Incas of Peru, don't get them mixed up. Um, the Mayans were firmly divided, so they each had their own like sort of tribes. Um, and though they shared similar ideologies and traditions, they were never united as a single empire. They were always mm. separate. Um, however, after several battles and disputes between them, they did end up settling and begin to merge, which was pretty good because then we come to the next era. You can switch to the next slide, which is the Spanish conquistador era. Oh, and conquistador. We know what happens in that. So, yeah, they were conquered by the Spanish in the 16th century. And you'll see a picture of Captain Gonzalo de Alvarado, uh, or his brother, I actually don't know which one that is, Pedro de Alvarado, who led the conquest. And with that, the Spanish unfortunately brought a lot of epidemics, which threatened mm. the native populations. And with that as well, during this time, Guatemala also went through a lot of natural disasters, like droughts, floods, and earthquakes. Oh, so wow. Is really it on a tectonic plate, Guatemala? I think so, yeah. It's around, like, because they have a... I'll come to that as well. Okay. Um, anyway, and then, so after that, all the Mayan cities were sort of abandoned by their people, which eventually led to them forming an alliance with the conquistadors. Mm. And then sort of the rest of history, they had, you know, just like squish it all in together. Some independence, a republic, some governments, regimes, civil wars, all of that. And then you come to present day Guatemala. Whoa. You can change slides now. So about half the population of Guatemala are from Mayan descent, mm, which is pretty cool pretty that cool. there's still that lot. Um, but now there's like a huge fusion of ethnic groups and different beliefs and combined traditions. Guatemala culture is also a representation of lively, I don't know how to pronounce this, syncretism? I think that's how you pronounce it. It's the fusion of Mayan spirituality, Catholicism, and evangelical Christianity. Oh, wow. So a whole sort of, you know, fusion. So that's a bit about the history. Um, thank you for listening. But now, these are a couple of things that Guatemala is famous for. Mm -hmm. So you can switch to the next slide. Like you were saying, Carmen, they are located on like, you know, the Ring of Fire? Yeah. It's like sort of like in that area. Okay. So they are home to a lot of volcanoes. They have 37 volcanoes. That's actually a lot. Only three of them are active at the moment. Um, but that does mean you can actually hike up the others. Mm. So it's pretty cool. You'll see there's a picture there of someone like hiking up an old volcano. Yeah. That's interesting because you don't really picture Guatemala as like a volcanic kind of country. I know. I country. didn't know yeah. this. They have... So a lot of their, like you'll see more pictures, but a lot of their um, sort of landscape is natural stuff. Hmm. Like if you change to the next slide, you'll see they're also home to a lot of lakes, which I will say are the clearest lakes I've ever seen. If you just look at those pictures, that is stunning. Um, there is a picture there of Lake Atitlan, which is like I think the main picture that I've put there. Um, it's surrounded by volcanoes and the lake was actually made from a massive volcanic eruption. Oh, wow. That's so I cool. Think, yeah pretty cool what if it was filled with lava once it was yeah. really like and a like a was, lake of lava yeah and then it cools down and that's what forms like the bed of it and then you know with that's very cool it forms water it's sort of like you know in the like first days of earth not first days first <laughs> millions of years of yeah. earth being formed mm. you know how it was like all fiery and water so it's like that it's like, mm. i think that's pretty cool that it still happens and that that yeah. forms like part of a country anyway next slide You'll see it also has lots of jungles and rainforests. This is what I'm talking about. It's very diverse. Um, you'll see there's one picture to the right of the screen. Uh, it's called Semuk Chompi. I don't know, Chompei. That sounds a bit No, funny. I don't know why you're looking that. at me. Um, it means sacred water. It's basically tiered pools in natural limestone that's found deep in the jungle. So you have wow. to like trek through all of it to get to it. And when you swim in them, do you become a mermaid? Oh, maybe, maybe. Um, if you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then next side, we've got a couple of famous monuments in Guatemala. We have the Tikal, which are the examples of the Mayan ruins, the Lost World, mm -hmm. which you've probably seen. I you love all that stuff. I find it so, like, yeah. 
do you get that feeling of it's just so like haunting but like so cool I know. like all those ruins you know like in dora how she explores <laughs> like maybe it's aztecs for the for yeah dora, but like yeah like that's what i was thinking of when i was looking at this or like indiana jones yeah like, going through all the yeah, ancient it's yeah it's so cool it's like that's what i like and then you also have what's called the santa catalina arch in the city of antigua so it's like a bright yellow sort of like arch building I thought that was very pretty. I love all, like, the Latin American, like, architecture and the mm-hmm. colours. It feels so yeah, vibrant. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's yeah. such a vibrant um, place. Uh, next slide. Some famous people. We've got, in order of how it is from left to right in the picture, we have Carlos Ruiz, who's a professional, former professional footballer. Mm-hmm. We have Oscar Isaac, who's an actor. I know him because he was in some of the Star Wars movies. Mm. And my personal favourite, we have Louis Von Ahn, who, take a good look at him on the right-hand side. So he... Actually, he invented, you know, the capture, prove you're not a robot thing? Yeah. So he invented that. You know what he also invented? What? Duolingo. Oh, wow. He's the creator of our best friend, Duolingo. I don't, I don't know if Duolingo is my best friend. He oh. kind of scares me at some times. Well, but, I have you know. a good, like, solid 37 streak. At the moment. <laughs> after not doing it, after having a streak of not doing it for, like, years, yeah. I suddenly have, like, a 40-day streak. So Guatemala created the evil owl. Oh, exactly. So wow. you can thank him, all the Duolingo fans out there. Thank this You know what I right learned here. recently with the, the capture, like, robot thing? Mm. You know the one where it's like, oh, just click on the button to prove you're not a robot? Mm. They track your mouse. They don't, like, that's that's yeah, how they know. Yeah, my dad said that those prove you're not a robot. It's actually not to prove you're not a robot. It's your training AI. Really? Yeah. That's what he says. That's I so think, cool. I think it's because, like, when you do it, mm. you're teaching it what a, like, you know, it's like, find the bike. You're teaching it what a bike looks like. Oh. You're teaching it. That's what it is. Wow. So. That's kind of know, man. odd. We're in a scam. It's a scam. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on. This is like another one of my favorite parts Next of slide. Guatemala. Yeah. We've got a lot of the traditions. Obviously, they like, they've got a rich history mm. and they're very big on like traditional stuff. And it's so just like vibrant and happy and colorful. Like those there are the Guatemalan markets. You've got food, you've got clothing. It's just like all throughout the streets. And I just, I honestly want to go and visit because it looks like so. It's busy, but it's so like like a happy. I love busy. the culture of like Latin America, Spain, um, all that kind of stuff. And next slide, if you go, they're famous for their colorful handmade fabrics, um, including the trajes, which are the traditional outfits that women wear. So it's like if you can't see, it, it's sort of like I don't know what material it might be. Some sort it's of like, like I should have mentioned this, but my parents they traveled around South America a lot, mm. so we actually have like these at oh, home. Yeah. Um, it's you like have brought one. I know. I just I didn't even think of it till you started speaking. Yeah. But it's like um cloth kind of but it's a bit more thick material it's made mm. out of like woven like you can tell it's kind of woven yeah. and they have all these really cool it's patterns all bright and, and colorful yeah. and like sh- it's stripy and they've got like tassels um i'm pretty sure my dad has one made from like llama or alpaca wool or something oh. it's really cool and then next slide they're kind of itchy though just oh. yeah the marimba is the national instrument of guatemala really uh, yeah so you know the marimba like the tone on apple yeah like that's the national i would have thought i thought the marimba was an african instrument and because they always is- have it Oh. oh, when we lived in Africa, they always used to have marimbas. And I thought, like, it was uh, from that area. But that's so interesting that it's um, Guatemalan. Yeah. Well, I'm about to play for you. Well, this is actually two hours of Guatemalan marimba, oh, but wow. I'll only play a snippet of it. And there, look, they're just like... <laughs> it's so happy. I know. Anyway, so that's the national instrument. Um, and they obviously have plenty of traditional dances that they also perform with that. Um, and then next slide, a couple of events that they have. We have the famous El Dia de los Muertos, mm-hmm. the Day of the Dead. So similar to what you might have seen in Mexico or if you've watched the movie Coco, um, <laughs> where they celebrate the idea of life and death. But they also have this thing called the Kite Festival. So you can see a picture there. Those, I thought when it meant kite, it was like normal size kite. No, they are like massive, gigantic kites that people spend months like before the date mm. planning and designing it because it's like a huge like it's there, there are some competitions in them to see who makes the best and yeah then also it's sort of um it's like a it's to honor ancient mayan beliefs and apparently that octagon there in that sort of design uh is believed to ward off evil spirits oh wow so that's pretty they're cool. very spiritual you know i know yeah yeah that's what i'm saying they're like very true to their um history and their mm. traditions um, and then finally, in the bottom two pictures, we have Semana Santa, which is Holy Week, which is a week-long celebration leading up to Easter Sunday. Um, and then next slide, 
which is another one of my personal favorites, the food. Oh. Because I don't know, like it's very similar to Mexican mm. um, cuisine, which is probably one of like maybe my second favorite cuisine. Mexican food is really good. They have so many good ones. So it's very similar to Mexican food. Um, but before I talk about like the dishes, I'll just say they are famous for having delicious avocados oh. and i saw like a pictures they're like huge like i've this seen size like avocados. brazilian avocados they're like literally the size they're of our huge. soft toy and like they obviously make that into guacamole um mm. which it's, it's like slightly different recipe to mexican guacamole but pretty much very similar mm-hmm. um and also coffee is the biggest export for guatemala mm. and it is likely that the coffee you have at starbucks is from guatemala my dad gets guatemalan coffee beans so oh, there you go i have smelt them yeah <laughs> Um, in terms of the traditional food, we have some, well, I have a lot of pictures there. We have the national dish of Guatemala is pepian, which is sort of like a part stew, part curry. Mm-hmm. Sort of like a, you can have it mainly, I think it's pork or chicken. Um, and it's served with rice or tortillas. Mm. And speaking of tortillas, um, instead of being made from wheat, which is what you usually eat, um, it's made from corn instead. Yeah. 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 Um, and you can find them in almost all restaurants, but people also are out there cooking them in the streets, like on, yeah. a, on a stove, and you can buy them for one or two dollars. A tortilla? Yes. Like someone, like with the meat, like oh, wow. someone's made like a whole thing out of for one to two dollars. That's good value. That's crazy. It I'm costs like <laughs> ten dollars. Exactly. I was like, what? Um, and they also have tamales, which you probably tamales. have seen or heard of the Mexican tamales, but these are instead wrapped in banana leaves. Oh. So I actually, I have brought something, mm-hmm. me- well, I will say it is from a Mexican restaurant, but mm-hmm. it is, it's a taco mm-hmm. that's, it's like a street style taco that it's like a similar recipe to what you'd find yeah. in Guatemala. Wow. So I think it's, I'll bring it out, I'll warm it up for you and then we can try it. Oh, I'm so excited. Like, Tacos it's are like, one of um, my favorites. So. Beef in it, I think. Yeah. But anyway, and there's also a sauce that came with it, so that's good. So we'll try that. Um, Yeah. So, I have the food here. I've warmed it up for you. Okay, they might be slightly soggy because it is from yesterday. That's but like, right. whatever. Um, These are birria tacos. Yum. Um, they are lovely street style tacos. I've got a little lime here. I don't know mm-hmm. if you want to throw some lime on it. And there's also a sauce there. I don't actually know what that sauce is, but I'm excited to try it. Mm. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> it's, anyway, it's, it's a bowl of sauce for those listening. I'll let you take the first. Oh, thank you. Do I just okay. grab a taco? Yeah. I don't know if you want to take the plate as well. It's all right. I've got the bowl. Okay. So you just, as I believe, I have seen this on... Um, Do you want lime? It's okay. I'm going to put lime on mine. Three, two, one. Mm. Oh, I got grease all down my mouth. Oh. But it's really good. I mainly need a tissue. Um, oh. It's delicious, but can you see? <laughs> <laughs> and I have no hands to wipe it, so... Wait, let me get you a tissue. Okay, my turn. Let me eat it and see how it is. Oh, it's not great technique. You've got to give us a review. Okay. On the right, she's putting the taco up to her mouth. She took a large bite, or maybe a normal size bite, um, and she's chewing. I kind of got most of the um end bit, so. Mm-hmm. If I was to describe it, I would say... It just tastes like, like it's like pulled beef, like pulled pork, but pulled mm. beef. Um, you can definitely taste the corn in the tortilla. It's really good. Mm. It's quite greasy. Mm. Um, usually I'm not a big fan of greasy food. I don't. You got to get the grease with the street style though. Yeah, that authentic. is true. But that's just a personal preference. There's also cheese and um, different herbs. I think if it is a coriander, the one that people don't like, the one that people find tastes like soap. <laughs> Whatever that one is, I think there's that in there. So um, if you don't like that, maybe just be aware. But um, it's really good. I would say try it for sure. I love it. <laughs> Keisha's dog's here in the studio as well. And you can um, have a little corn chip. He wants it. He's looking at her. You can have a corn chip. They were like little tortilla corn. Do you want a corn chip, Mama? Sure. Do you prefer the corn or the normal tortilla? What? Oh, like in terms of this. Hmm. I actually quite like this, you know. Personally, I prefer the corn. Might be. I don't know if it's better for you, but it feels better for you. Um. So yeah, what else did you learn about um Guatemala? <laughs> I'm too busy indulging now. <laughs> All right, Carmen. While we're enjoying <laughs> the rest of this meal, 
I'm going to tell you some fun facts about Guatemala that I found out. Firstly, the word Guatemala, the name of the country, means place of many trees, which oh. is fitting as yeah, there are a lot of fitting. rainforests and jungles and stuff. Um, there are also these popular buses that are called chicken buses, oh. which you've probably seen a picture of. Um, but they're basically retired American school buses. Oh wow! That they go and like paint and decorate mm-hmm. and everything to, m- and they just go around the city and stuff mm-hmm. as just like normal buses. That's pretty cool. I know, yeah. Um, it's sort of like if you've watched Outer Banks when they go to wherever they go to and they're in that bus, it's like that. Okay, that was such a good explanation. <laughs> um, also the oh yeah, the ancient Maya invented chocolate. Oh, wow, yeah, because yeah. of, like, the cocoa beans. Mm-hmm. They come from... And Guatemala yeah. is the first place to make a chocolate bar. Hmm. So, oh. you can thank them again. South America is very good at beans. Exactly. Refried coffee, mm. coca. And finally, in the 2012 Summer Olympics in London, Guatemala received its first ever Olympic medal. Oh, do you know what sport it was? Yeah. Um, Eric Barondo won the men's 20-kilometer walk. Ooh. And in total, now they've won three medals. I think this... The recent Olympics, someone broke a world record and won the gold medal as That's well. Pretty this cool. girl. I forgot what it was for. Though. Oh, some like shooting, like something like that. Yeah. Like some shooting one. Yeah. That's very cool. Mm. Go Guatemala. I'm a, I'm a fan, I must say. You've, you've inspired me. You've persuaded me. I will. We will go to. We'll travel the dangerous treks of the Amazon and walk through all the countries to it's get to Guatemala. I know, I know. I'm <laughs> saying going through to get to Guatemala. Yes, we will. We will go and find the lost ancient. I actually, one thing on my, I don't know if I said this in my bucket list of travel. I want to go to like those ancient places, mm. like ancient Egypt tomb. I want to oh, go no. into. Oh no, not a tomb for me. I want to go yeah. into an ancient Mayan thing. <laughs> oh, have you seen that viral? There's a viral clip of someone actually climbing that monument, some lady to protest something and no, she got in trouble. Terrible. Do you know what she was protesting? Yeah. So, um, that was really good. Fun Guatemala. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything else you wanted to tell us? To share with us? Any Spanish? I can speak some Spanish for you. Donde está la de biblioteca? Donde eres tú? De donde eres tú? Puedo ir al baño, por favor? Mm-hmm. Always when needed to use that. Pasito, pasito, suave, suavecito. Bueno, Nos vamos pegando poquito, poquito. 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 <laughs> I actually really love um Latin music. Like I listen to it a lot, so mm. I reckon I really could get behind Guatemala. Well, I am behind Guatemala. Sorry, I'm just Even like more. enjoying this. She really is. She's And I'm also I'm like trying to milk this line because I really What a odd sentence. What did Keisha say to me before <laughs> the odd weirdest sentence I've heard today, Keisha said to me, I got in the car, she goes, Do you wanna see my nose bacteria? <laughs> And I was like, we did a biology practical where we looked at, we took swabs of our nose and then we put it in like an agar plate and incubated it. So I was like, do you want to see a picture of it? So, you know, I can say I've seen Keisha's nose bacteria, which is a, I don't know if it's a privilege or a curse, but uh, there we go. That's been my day. Thank you. Some ASMR to finish up the segment. Wait. That's actually really good. (laughs) Yummy. I think the um sauce adds some like freshness that cuts through the grease, which is why you need it. Ready? Really good. It's so much better with lime. Mm. But yeah, I think I don't know what the sauce is, but it's very needed to um cut through that sweet that greasiness and the um fattiness of all the cheese and the beef that's in the taco. I'd say it's really good. And I think when it's actually fresh. Mm. For sure. It's much better. When we go to Guatemala, we'll get it fresh. Mm-hmm. And we'll, we'll report back. All right. Do you want to call it there and move on to my my country? All right. We're back from that lovely trip to Guatemala. Mm-hmm. And now put on your warmest clothes because we are going to Mongolia. <gasps> so, yeah, my country was Mongolia. And um, actually, while researching it, I really, really enjoyed it. Like that mm-hmm. culture... And kind of the lifestyle they live is so fascinating to me. And I'm going to go into it a bit more. Um, But yeah, I I just want to preface like with this whole thing. I have a couple of like jokey bits in there. I don't want to be making fun of Mongolia. I'm meaning this in the most respectful way possible. (laughs) But we are a kind of a comedy podcast. So I kind of wanted to make it a bit fun as well. But my main goal is to educate and, you know, teach about this lovely country. Um, 
So yeah, my I have no idea what she's talking about. So she says something don't associate it with me. Nah, you'll find out. Um, but yeah, so some fast facts about Mongolia. Uh, for those who don't know, it's kind of near China and Russia, like around there, kind of in the middle of Asia. Uh, but don't confuse Mongolia with China. Mongolia is not part of China. But there are 3.4 million people in Mongolia. Mm. Ulaanbaatar is the capital. And the official currency of Mongolia is the Mongolian Tugrik, Tugrik, hmm. and each Tugrik consists of a hundred Mongos. Oh, interesting. yeah. Uh, Do you want me to show the flag? Yeah, the flag is the Mongolian flag is a flag made up of it's red, red, and blue, blue, and red again. And there's some yellow little crest on the left side. Hmm. Uh, and so they speak Mongolian in Mongolia, which, oh, nice. you know, I don't know if you would have guessed that, but mm-hmm. they, that's what they do. Uh, 90% of the population speak it. Although English is quickly replacing Russian as the most popular, and like the second most popular Ooh, language Russian. in oh, yeah, Mongolia. Because so they're right near Russia. I don't know why I just never think, like, I feel like they're so separate. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But no, they're like, they're kind of, I don't want to say, I don't want to brand them as a mix between Russia and mm. China, but it's a good kind of combination like of the, yeah, it's a blend of the cultures because that's like obviously where people from both mm. sides come in and it's created this whole new place. But um, yeah, it, many Mongolians also speak Korean, Japanese, Chinese, German and other Western European languages. And I was looking at like some stories of people who lived in Mongolia and there was this one little lady and she was saying how she loves to watch all the Korean like K-dramas. Mm. In Mongolia, which I just thought was the cutest thing ever. Um, but yeah, so the main thing about Mongolia, I think that is, I hope it's the most well-known thing or it should be now, is that they're a very nomadic culture. So they love, they go around and they live for land and I'll speak more about that later. Uh, but now it is becoming more urban because their big city is becoming more urbanized mm-hmm. and people want that, you know, they want to be able to, you know, give themselves, go to university, go to school, give themselves more of a chance at life. Uh but it is the 18th largest country in the world. Hmm. But as I said, there's only 3.4 million people. So it's one of the emptiest countries with only two people per one square kilometre. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and it is the second largest landlocked country. So there's no sea borders around it anywhere. Oh. Yeah. So the terrain in Mongolia is actually very, very difficult to live in. But they've adapted very well. Um, so you want to hear some history of yeah. Mongolia? Shoot. And okay, so the Mongolian history is a long, long history and we could have a whole podcast yeah. and not even scratch the surface so this is the very abridged version uh but let us know if you actually want more deep dives into stuff than that because i love doing all this kind of you know yeah, deep research fun. and talking about things i could talk about a topic that i'm passionate about for ages so you know if you like this style of podcast let us know uh but in a nutshell in 1206 Chengiz Khan. Most people say Genghis Khan. It's actually Chengiz Khan. Oh, is it? No, it's like that. I think it's actually Chengiz Khan. Like you don't actually say the K. Oh. Yeah. I so love you. that's something You've I learned. Genghis Khan. This whole yeah, time. Genghis Khan is not probably how you pronounce it, but that's how most. Sorry, people. Genghis. <laughs> Chengiz. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Chengiz. See, she can't even learn. Um, spelt like Chin. Mm. Gis. Hmm. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, so he founded the Mongol Empire, which is was known as the largest empire in history. And at its like largest point, it expanded from Poland, so like you know Europe, all the way to Korea, like that was east to west. And then it went from Siberia, which is like up north, all the way down to Vietnam. So it was about thirty three million square kilometers. Pretty much Asia. All of no, but yeah, pretty much all of Asia. But like it was huge. Um, and so. Genghis Khan reestablished the Silk Road, which was, you know, known for communication and trade, mm-hmm. uh, kind of during his reign, as well as doing many other things and, you know, lots of fighting and, you know, all that kind of stuff happened. But after he died, his reign was divided among his four sons. Ooh, yeah. That's like... Yeah. Ugh. Ogdai Khan, I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry, um, became the Supreme Khan, so, like, head of everyone. But after 16 years, he died of suspicious circumstances. Oh, we know what that is. Yeah. And today is National Day of the Curious, the curious events, events Day. So, you know, that could fit Let's under it. Let's look into that. How did he die? <laughs> um, but then, so, they kept expanding the land then, and Kublai Khan, which I'm sure that's a bit more popular name, mm-hmm. famous name, um, became ruler and established the Yuan dynasty, which was defeated in 1368 by the Ming dynasty. Hmm. Um, and some say that the Mongol Empire ended with Kublai Khan's death in 1294, or others say with the defeat of the Yuan, Yuan dynasty. I don't know how to say it, but um, which was a little bit before that. But then, so, you know, a couple hundred years later, the Mongol Empire became part of the Chinese um, 
Qing Dynasty, I think that's how you say it. Um, and after 200 years of being ruled by them, it declared its independence in 1911, uh, led by Bokht Khan, the spiritual leader of Mongolia's Tibetan Buddhism. So mm. they were part of China and then there was lots of like fighting, internal conflicts, all that kind of stuff. They declared independence. Um, and then, so that was in 1911. And then after that, more battles with China happened. But then in 1945, the Soviet Union and Chinese national nationalist government finally like actually recognized Mongolia's independence. But, so Mongolia was like, yeah, we're going to be independent. China's like, yeah, but not really. Like you're kind of like ours. And then finally they kind of got their independence. Mm-hmm. And then over like the past kind of two decades, like since 1990, 2000s, it's just kind of started becoming a m- more, transforming itself from more of a socialist country to a um, planned economy in a democracy kind of thing Hmm. so they were yeah like largely socialist and then became a democracy and they have one of the world's fastest growing economies in Hmm. Mongolia looking at the capital of Mongolia it is more urbanized than you think like it kind of does almost not I would want to compare it to Dubai but like from certain angles like you could definitely believe it was something like that like it's actually yeah it's like a high-rise city yeah yeah look it up um, but you can also see like it's got a lovely backdrop to the mountains and everything because mm. that is obviously like where their culture first yeah. came from. Um, and so talking about the nomadic culture of Mongolia, so they mostly, I mean, okay, most of the population now live in the city, but I'm just going to be speaking about in the past and kind of those people who live more in the mm-hmm. rural side of Mongolia. They live in a gur, so G-E-R, meaning home in Mongolia, but it's more commonly referred to as a yurt in English. So it's like a little, like it's a portable home. They set it up and then they live there for a bit and they move mm-hmm, with their livestock, mm-hmm, yeah. you know. Um, and it's like a little circular house, wooden frame, and then they've got like doors and everything. They have TVs in them. They have oh. beds, kitchen, everything. Like they just move it all. So, they, yeah, there is internet, which I found interesting. Like I didn't think you'd have it in rural Mongolia, but most people have like a satellite phone or something. They yeah. have quite – they're like they're getting technology there. Um, but, yeah, it takes about three hours or under three hours to assemble, which is quite surprising. You can like build your home and take yeah. it down in three hours. Uh, but, yeah, mostly where they are is the Gobi Desert, which is one of the harshest climates in the world. Temperatures can raise range between 113 Fahrenheit and minus 40 Fahrenheit. Um, so the girls is a big like protection for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and they said like uh, this quote. I think I've mentioned it later as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the cities, to be alone, you go into your apartment. Here, to be alone, you go outside. Mm-hmm. So the girl was like a part of their culture, their family culture, their social, you know, mm. bonding is inside their homes. And then when you go outside, it's just to be connected to nature and outside, which I loved yeah so it's like really peaceful um and so yeah i even wrote a note like they seem really happy and it's just their life yeah, like like a I, peaceful life yeah i'd love to go off the grid and just kind of live do my own thing with mm. nature i love that kind of stuff i know you definitely wouldn't you're more of a city girl yeah but yeah but it's like as in in a trip i would do this like just yeah. randomly like in a mountain like like this landscape here that i can see just like a mountain full of grass i just want to like sit there for a bit and just be like so peaceful and like just like all the animals as well. Like they always ride horses everywhere. Mm. I love horses because I grew up riding horses. And like I'll talk about more about the animals as well later. But it's just it's so cool. It's such a different lifestyle to what most people live. But yeah, like you can clearly see because I watched I watched a documentary about like living in Mongolia preparing for this because I just found it so cool. Mm. Um, How happy and how kind of simple their life is. But that's actually like better, I think. Because our lives are just so complicated. Sometimes mm. we forget to just sit and, you know see the world anyways so um one of the things that fascinated me and i heard about it a bit before but i looked into a bit more doing research is their practice of eagle hunting Hmm. so it's a kazakh or from kazakhstan it's a tradition but they also do it in mongolia okay and it's not really popular now because it's just like not really as good as what the modern technologies we have now for hunting and stuff but they train eagles they like get wild eagles and they use them to hunt kill foxes or kill you know wolves that are threatening Mm. their livestock and stuff it's really cool i watched i'll put the link we'll put the link in the show description of like this little youtube video i watched where they kind of go and they see this um mongolian eagle hunter and how they're trying to preserve the Mm. tradition but you want to planet of the apes (laughs) you've watched it they train eagles do you want to hear a little bit about more about eagle hunting okay so um they take the eagles from the es- nest and raise them as their own. So yeah, yeah. It's literally exactly planet, like in that movie. Planet of the Apes. Oh, my God. But there's another movie. Um, What's it called? 
the eagle huntress that they made about oh. a woman in Mongolia who wanted to become an eagle hunter because usually, you know, it's meant for men, that mm. like hunting thing. Women are meant to be in the kitchen or whatever we're supposed we're forced to do. Not really, but in our culture. But um, it was such a pivotal part in their like history because it inspired a lot of young mm. girls to, you know, be more proactive, this film and everyone, all the girls, they really looked up to her. But I will say that a bit later as well. Um, but basically, to communicate with the eagles, they stroke them. So that's mm. like if it's a harsh stroke, you know, they're, you know, good. If it's a – or bad, if it's a gentle stroke, it's good. And so that's how yeah. the eagles communicate. And they also do like a eagle call. They have like a fox on like a little – or whatever they're hunting. And they'll like call the eagle with – I don't want to try and do it, but you know yeah. what I mean. Um, do you want to give us a impression of an eagle? That was pretty good. I think that was pretty good. <laughs> I mean, you were, weren't you a seagull? I'm a bird whisperer, guys. No, you were a seagull, so never mind. I'm not a seagull. <laughs> um, I can do a seagull, though. Yeah? <laughs> no, I'm actually a bird whisperer. And give, up, give, us, give us a crow. Um, sorry, wait. I just need, like, um... <laughs> <laughs> wait, I can't do it. Hang on, like... <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> and a duck. Give us a duck to finish off. Quack. <laughs> that was not a good <laughs> anyway <Noot, noot. laughs> back to mongolia yeah. um so with these eagles they don't actually keep them the whole lives so they release them after about four or five years oh, back nice, into the yeah. wild and because they've been trained in hunting it's not really like taking away from their natural instincts which i think is really cool that we don't really do that in western culture mm. but yeah it was about like eagle hunting was done about getting food and furs but now they just do it to maintain the culture because there's only about 60 eagle hunters mm. left in mongolia which is not a lot at all um and so now a lot of kids they want to go to school and because it's something that's passed down through parents so the parents' biggest or the parents biggest dream is for their kids to become eagle 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 hunters Mm. and you know continue the tradition but they don't have the heart to tell their kids you know don't go to school don't better your life Mm. all that kind of stuff that's why it's kind of dying out Mm. but a lot of girls now inspired by the film they want to you know, be part of that and be an eagle huntress because they want to, you know, share the culture, preserve the culture. And so that's kind of become, I wouldn't say the full direction it's going, but a, a direction that it is going mm-hmm. in Mongolia yeah. off this, based off this documentary I watched. Um, and yeah, it's just, it was really inspiring watching these women who, or these girls even, they're still in school and they're so determined to go against basically what everyone in society mm-hmm. is telling them to do what they want to do. Yeah. Like this girl, she's just like, I wanted to be an eagle hunter, so I'm going to do it. Nothing's like, I was just so impressed. So definitely give it a watch if you want. And yeah, that was all I had about eagle hunting. Mm-hmm. Whoosh. I don't know if you've heard, like I try not to go too into the, like, the mainstream Mongolia stuff. This is more the niche kind of mm-hmm. parts of the culture is the Mongolian throat singing. I've seen that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's pretty cool. What they do, it's a, uh, so Mongol Tuvan throat singing. Uh, they hum a pitch and then simultaneously like they use their mouths to create a resonance chamber mm-hmm. and so you can sing the harmonies. Yeah. It's so difficult and I, honestly, I don't even hear it sometimes. Try. I don't want to be disrespectful <laughs> to the culture. But uh, do you want to hear someone actually doing it? Someone who yeah. can do it, do okay. it? Yeah. I remember I saw I saw this on The Voice. Someone came on, he was mm-hmm. Mongolian and he's like, I want to show you my culture. Oh. This is what we do. Um, but yeah, so this is the Mongol Tuvan throat singing. It sounds like a an instrument. Yeah, but they they do it with their mouth. It's pretty mm. cool. It th- it takes a really trained ear to be able to hear the two tones, but you can kind of hear it's like mm. a bit more. Like you can hear the kind of harmonies there. But yeah, so that's their singing. That's part of their music, and obviously they have all the traditional mm-hmm. instruments and stuff as well. Um, but the last little thing that I wanted to talk about was the food. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so Mongolian food, they're simple, but they have a lot of meat mm-hmm. because obviously it's such harsh conditions. They can't really grow many yeah. like crops and stuff. So usually they have like mutton, beef, camel, horse, sheep, even marmot, which is like a groundhog. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes they'll have like vegetables, noodles, rices, pasta. They make breads and stuff. Um, and mainly people eat sheep and goat meat. But yeah, so it was kind of hard for me to find authentic Mongolian food yeah. to bring in. But I'll tell you what I managed to pull together. Because um, like one of their big, like like if you have guests over or something, they'll give like the head of the sheep and that's seen like as you a... You brought a head of a sheep? I tried. I really tried, but I just couldn't couldn't find it in time. Poor old Bessie. <laughs> um, but yeah, they also have a lot of milk tea. So um, 
wild fruit juice and homemade alcohol mm. because it's so cold the alcohol is like seen as it like warms them up like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, most yeah. days people will be drinking alcohol like yeah. they have a lot of alcohol in mongolia um and so they have a lot of dairy obviously because they have like livestock and all that kind of stuff um and they have lots of like pastries fried bread fried bread biscuits all that kind of stuff um and i had there was this whole website with all the different traditional foods and stuff but here are some of my favorites that i found so dumpling variations i think they call it booze and bunch which is um one of the most uh of the best mongolian cuisines on holidays they have dumplings um so they have the Mongolian New Year. They prepare as many as a thousand dumplings for their guests. Mm. Um, budog is which is goat or marmot, which I said. Uh, Korkog is traditional Mongolian barbecue, and I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but you yeah. know, we'll. I'm trying to you know educate. <laughs> Anyways, um, so they have this like thing I think bantan, which is meat porridge. Mm. They have a lot of intestines, so stomach, liver, lung, eyes, head, and heart, because you don't want to like put mm. things to waste it doesn't sound like something I yeah enjoy, but you know if we went we'd have to try it um, um they have like dried meat as well i think borts they call it mm. um they have these things called bort sog which are cookies which are actually mm. like fire they look so good it's like mm. little like twisted powdered sugar really good the last thing they have is like fermented mare's milk mm. so they put the milk into a sheep's stomach to make it sour pound it with a stick for an hour to help fermentation and wait the- wait wait backtrack they put it in a stomach? So they have, like, they kill the sheep. They've got some sheep milk and they have a sheep stomach. They put the milk in the stomach, like, pound it with a stick to help it ferment, ferment, and then they sit for three to four hours. How is the stomach still functioning? Like, the stom- like it's a vessel to hold. Oh, like it's not actually, like, oh, I thought... No! I thought they're using the stomach. Why? I was like, I thought they were using the stomach for its purpose of, like, no, being not a to stomach. Digest, and I'm just like... To- how, what, what in the science <laughs> no, i guess like some of the enzymes must like help it ferment or something in the stomach or something like that but yeah so that's how they make um mm. the fermented mare's milk and they usually they use it to clean their system so like mm. flush it out but don't drink too much because they say it's not too good for you okay um so with that huge selection of um you know foods and delicious things i brought in one of my favorite mongolian meals that mm-hmm. i'm sure you know we all have a uh, fresh ish from our local chinese shop i brought mongolian beef <laughs> which is actually not really mongolian. mongolian i think they just call it that but it's that's okay. what i got you know it's in the name you know, <laughs> mongolian beef um so i'm gonna go prepare it and then we can eat it while i play my interview for you no to finish up the episode i think i might know who your interview is with. i think you might Whoosh. okay guys we're back with our mongolian beef fresh from mongolia. the gobi desert <laughs> um do you want to do a taste is this test? the horse meat you were talking about Carmen? yeah this is the horse meat that okay get a bit of rice and a bit of sauce. i'm sure everyone here has heard of mongolian beef and if you haven't try it it's good ready mm-hmm. mm. Mm. very good mm. let me introduce our interview okay and i don't want this to come across as rude we're just having a bit of fun no, we obviously no. very much love the mongolian culture mm-hmm. um but we have a friend who is very white um she finds pepper spicy mm-hmm. but we tease her you know who you are you You're know who you are not watching but you know who you <laughs> actually are. she asked when this episode's coming out so oh, she well. might actually watch well, hopefully hello, you then. are hi welcome first episode tuning in mm-hmm. <laughs> hopefully you stay for more anyways um so she's quite white. She finds pepper spicy. She's quite white. But we like to tease her about being Mongolian as like... Because apparently she wait, said... Wait. Oh, okay. Sorry. We'll let her explain it to you. Yeah. I think she'll do a better job. So this is... I've got her to record some um, voice notes of how how she's connected to Mongolia. Let me play it for you. Everybody in the comments, be nice to her, okay? She's our friend. She's our friend. She's a lovely person. But you can say mean things. Yeah. But bully her. But tease her. P- politely tease her. Anyways, this is how she's connected to Mongolia. So my connection to Mongolia actually goes back hundreds of years. And while you may be thinking, is that Genghis Khan? No. My very, very far removed grandfather or mother potentially was Mongolian. Potentially. <laughs> so she's not even really Mongolian. I thought she did like a deer. No, she didn't. No, just just one of the names might have been maybe from that area. So we like to pretend she is just to yeah. to give her some um cultural diversity. Um, and so the next question I asked her was just mm-hmm. you know how she feels about her 
connection to Mongolia, how mm-hmm. she feels about her homeland, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know, how I feel about Mongolia, you know, you always have a connection to your homeland. And it's just, when you think of a happy place, you know, I think of Mongolia. You know, it's just so rich in culture and just, it's just fabulous. (laughs) When I first listened to these, I was crying of laughter. Um, But she hasn't actually done much research on Mongolia so she doesn't really know the culture that well but I asked her what her favorite part of the food favorite yeah. food and pa- favorite part of the culture were just to see you know what she does know and obviously we all know now now know a lot because of our episode but this is what mm-hmm. this is what our friend said my favorite Mongolian food would have to be without a doubt the dumplings you know they're just one of a kind. They top every other dumpling I've had, and just you know, really brings you back. To brings me back. <laughs> <laughs> and this is this is her favorite part of the culture. My favorite part of the Mongolian culture would have to be, I would say, the amount of horses that are running around. You know, we've all heard stories where there's just so many horses in Mongolia, and it's just my favourite part of the culture, you know, as a horse rider in my younger years. That's true, you know, okay. just so so connected to that part of it. <laughs> I'm so glad that she's connecting with her heritage. Yeah, and I'm curious to know what obvious stories of the horses she's mm-hmm. heard. But you because know, I've known this friend for about, what, 14 years of my life? Mm-hmm. Never once has she mentioned a horse from Mongolia, <laughs> but you know, we learn something about ourselves every day. So yeah, I see. And then just my final question to her was, mm-hmm. would she actually want to visit Mongolia and actually learn about the culture? Mm-hmm. This is what she had to say. Obviously, yes, right. Seriousness, I would love to visit Mongolia in the future. I'd love to know more about its history, from what I, you know, don't already know, and you know, just love to experience the food that I was saying just really the authentic experience the food please she can't even eat thai food I know. <laughs> I, I've, even like to eat imagine getting thai her, or chinese how is she gonna eat mongolian imagine her getting presented with like a sheep's head uh what would she, she would do never that's so funny anyway so i hope you enjoyed that but yeah our fellow mongolian i'm sad we don't know anyone in this guatemalan no mm. well really mongolian but i hope you enjoyed listening to our friend talk and you didn't find it offensive. Imagine don't that be she canceled. is actually like somewhere in there. They're actually from Mongolia. She is. Yeah, like imagine. she might be. Exactly. But it's such a distant part that I feel like. I don't know. Who knows? Anyways, that was today's episode. Do you have anything else you wanted to mm. talk about? No, not it really. Um. Let us we know really if you both like. Enjoyed that. I let hope us you know did. if you like the format mm. and wanted. To do it again. Want some more show and tell ones? Mm-hmm. Cause it's nice to learn about something new, for sure. Mm. And yeah, and you know what? Mm-hmm. I realized our two countries are good because both of ours were countries where people know about the culture in terms of the country that's next door. Yeah, right. And that's so true. Guatemala people know a lot about Mexican culture. Very similar in Guatemala. Mm. Not the same. Mm. People in Mongolia, people might be familiar with Chinese culture, but it's not the same. It's so true. Yeah. We've got some underdog countries. We do. Exactly. Anyways, so thanks for watching, guys. Mm-hmm. I hope you learned something new. If you've stayed this long, you Thank must be you. really passionate about Mongolia and Guatemala. If you've stayed this long, comment down below the two flags so we yeah, know who you are. For sure. To celebrate and to commem not commemorate. To what's the word I'm looking for? First two Honor. flags. First two flags we see will pin the comment. <laughs> so you'll be right at the top of our endless stream of comments. <laughs> All right, bye bye guys. <laughs> See ya. This is DJ Cumin and MC Keith signing out. Good night.